and answers 176 to 233. 176. Does this language from the Rex MOU mean my evaluation cannot go down with the first evaluation? Beginning March 12, 2022, a two-week survey will be conducted to determine the average weekly number of activity scans per route. Once the average is determined, the route evaluations will be adjusted through a base hour change, provided the rural carrier's evaluated compensation will increase. Hey, no. This language establishes the manner in which we will be paid for the additional Rex activity scans themselves. It has nothing to do with the first full evaluations under Rex. The time for these additional scans will be added to our evaluations from March 12, 2022, until the first evaluations under Rex take effect on July 16, 2022. 177. On the Rex test, how many routes would have lost time? And how many routes would have gained time in the Rex test of the 4,000 plus routes tested? A. The best analysis of mapped routes, done by our engineer, Dr. Ken Maracle, indicated that approximately 45% of routes would gain 120 minutes or more per week, 23% would go down by 120 minutes or more per week, and the remaining 32% of the routes would end up within 120 minutes, plus or minus, of their current evaluated hours. Please understand that this analysis was done using a combination of data from the latest mail counts and Rex information. We do not have complete data on Rex activity scans for these routes. Mail volume increases or decreases since the last mail count will definitely affect the evaluations under Rex. 178. What happens when you map your route and there are boxes mapped that a different route delivers? A. That should not happen. Only boxes you actually deliver should be mapped to your route. Those deliveries should be removed from your route and added to the correct route. Please have your manager contact the Rex Mapping Help Desk for assistance in getting this corrected. 179. How is the footage for authorized dismounts determined? A. Much the same as it is now. Each authorized dismount for CBUs, schools, businesses, etc., should be measured and entered in the dismount sections when mapping the route. Measurements come from the current PS Form 4003 and slash route inspection. 180. Will we receive any notice of whether our evaluation went up or down before the results go into effect in the July paycheck? A. Yes, the new evaluations on Form 4241A should be available within two weeks of the end of the data collection periods. 181. In the guide and questions, it says we retain the right to case DPS, but looking at the standard times the only allowance for DPS I can find is to verify address and is for street time. How is the time for casing DPS going to be accounted for? My PM already told us with the new system we have to take DPS to the street. How can I explain to him where the time to case it is coming from? A. Your postmaster is absolutely wrong. Just like now. There is no casing standard for DPS letters, all allowances are allocated to street time. However, we still retain the contractual right to case DPS letters. The standard is irrelevant to this fact. 182. Are railroad crossings mapped on customers' driveways? I have five that I have to cross when I have to go to customers' houses for packages and accountable mail. A. No. There is no additional allowance for out-of-route driving to deliver parcels etc. to the door. The only allowance is straight-line driving distance from the mailbox location to the parking location. 183. How are end-of-shift duties timed? A. Time for end-of-shift duties start when you turn enter return 2 du immediately upon turning off and securing the vehicle upon return. It includes everything you do from that point until you either enter PIM casing to begin casing mail for the following day or enter clock out to go home. 184. The date of startup of the REX system has been pushed forward two weeks to March 26, 2022. Does this mean all the beginning and ending dates have been pushed forward two weeks? A. No, only the ending of the first interim period and the ending of the last interim period. 185. If a customer leaves a note for me to pick up parcels at the door, I go to the door. There are 20 parcels. I pull up carrier pickup, then count the parcels, enter 20 but only skin 5. 
What is the time credit I would get for the 15 remaining parcels? A. All 20 parcels are credited as parcels collected at 9.55 seconds each. In addition, you will receive actual time for handling them upon return to the office as part of end of shift duties. Please see page 80 of the document determining rural route evaluations under RECS which is linked at the top. 186. When I get everything ready for my route and load my vehicle, I plan to stop at a safe location about halfway through where I swap over to the second half of my mail and parcels. This usually takes about 5 minutes. Management has told us that under Rex, this is considered a break and should be noted on the scanner as one. Is this correct? A. Absolutely not. This is considered reloading time, and it is covered by an Rex standard based on the volume of mail received that day. It is not a timed event and requires no scan or entry in the MDD. Please see pages 93 to 96 of the document determining rural route evaluations under Rex which is linked at the top. 187. Carriers who take hampers from the parcel area directly to their vehicles will have high values of daily loading time, since they sort and organize them in delivery order right there while loading the vehicles. Are there any requirements to sort and organize parcels at the carrier's case before beginning the loading process? A. Yes. Just as under the current system, the time standards for parcels include organizing them and putting them in order in the office. This is not part of loading time. It never has been. 188. Do regular carriers get paid evaluated time for days spent mapping their route? Or actual hours worked? A. Regular carrier should be placed on DACA code P for the days they map the route. They will be compensated the evaluated hours. 189. Will there be training provided by DRs and ADRs for RECs like past mail counts? A. Yes. 190. Will the academy instructors be providing training to assist the RCAs in the adjusting to the job? A. Yes, as always. Our academy instructors do an excellent job in teaching new duties of the position. 191. Will there be an extended period of time past the current 24 hours to provide the additional on-the-job training with the regular carrier? A. As always, 24 hours is a minimum. Additional training should be provided until the RCA is proficient. 192. Under Rex, what is the credit for vacation hold mail? A. Just like the current system, the route is credited for every piece of mail received during the hold and will receive credit for servicing the box every day the address has mail while on hold, even though no stop is made. If the hold mail has to be taken someplace in the office other than the carrier's case, credit would be given during the mini mail count as miscellaneous time. When the hold mail is delivered, if it requires a trip to the door, the carrier will enter Dormisk and receive credit for the trip to the door. If the hold bundle fits in the mailbox, there is no additional credit. 193. If parcels are placed on floor by clerks, then do we load truck time for placing parcels in hamper? A. If the clerks bring the parcels to your case, Rex includes a standard for each parcel for organizing and placing them in a tray and or in the conveyance. This is not part of loading time. 194. I have a question about an other delivery, authorized dismount. If I'm serving a government-approved mailbox at this stop, but the parcel will not fit in the box, should I attempt delivery to the door? If the parcel should be left at the door, how would I record the scan? A. If the delivery is an other delivery with an authorized dismount, then you are already paid to go to the door every day. You would scan all parcels as delivered or notice left as appropriate. The only new rec scan you would use is if you had to make more than one trip to the door. In this case, you would use A-U-T-H-D-I-S-M-O-U-N-T and enter one in the number of trips to indicate one additional trip. 195. How do we get credit for picking up parcels from mailboxes with money attached? The Amish in the area send that way in this area. Do we do any type of scan for these? A. Please see number 30 on page 81 of the document determining rural route evaluations under Rex which is linked at the top. Most of the time credit for these items is actual time in end of shift duties. 196. When are the out lunch and return lunch entries used? 
A. The entries are used to record your actual lunch time taken exactly as it is recorded now. When you take a lunch break you enter out lunch, and when you return, you enter R-E-T-U-R-N-L-U-N-C-H. Just as now, you have 30 minutes to use, or not use, as you please and break up as you please. This time does not include restroom breaks in the office, vehicle breakdowns, reloading, flat tires, or any other activity that has never been considered as lunchtime for rural carriers. There has been no change to the definition of, or the recording of lunchtime. We are just using the MDD as we go, instead of writing it all down on the 4240 at the end of the day. 197. Does the driving time for the day fluctuate depending on what the coverage factor is, or is it the same every day? A. Driving time remains the same every day. The coverage factor only affects the box allowance for the day. 198. During previous mail physical mail counts, outgoing mail picked up and brought back, each piece was counted, and an average used for the year. Will this be done during the mini mail counts, or how will we get credit for this? A. See question 20. 199. Under the REC system, is the evaluated hours per week still limited to AK48? A. Yes. There is no change to the FLSA or the contractual language pertaining to the provisions of that law. 200. I am responsible for delivering PA box mail, parcels, and a lock pouch from one post office to another by way of a shuttle using a post office vehicle. How will I be credited for this work under Rex? A. Just like now, this is credited as a locked pouch stop. Please see pages 86 to 87 of the document determining rural route evaluations under Rex which is linked at the top. 201. Is there something that we have to put in when mapping to get credit for locked pouch? A. Yes, you must enter the location as a low volume or high volume interunit mail location as part of the DPM program. 202. Why is the departing to root function so important when I have already clocked in? Henceforth my next action is delivering the mail. A. That entry is only for timekeeping purposes. Eventually, management plans to eliminate the hard copy 4240. 203. Do we use UNSCANPARCEL for packages with no barcode or just for packages that barcode is not working? A. It is used for both to ensure you are credited with delivering the parcel. However, if you can manually enter the barcode number, you should do so to provide proper service and eliminate the need to use the UNSCANPARCEL function. 204. Where is time recorded for safety and service talks and or training videos? A. Safety and service talks will be recorded by management with the clock starting as soon as the talk is announced. The time will end when the talk concludes. All routes will be credited with the total time plus a trip, walking distance, back to the case from the place where the carrier stands for the talks. This is one of the distances measured for the office walk database. 205. We were told that you can only hit stamp stock sales if you carry a supply from the post office, and since they don't want to deal with it then we can't ever use that option. I carry my own stamps and if I don't have enough to fill an order then I bring the order in and have the office fill it via an orange envelope. What is the correct procedure to be able to use the stamp sales option? A. Rural carriers always have the option of getting stamp stock issued by management or carrying an adequate supply of their own. Regardless of which way you choose, every stamp sale should be entered in the MDD and will be credited. 206. I read that STARTDEVIATION and ENDDEVIATION are only for priority express mail when we have to deviate to deliver it on time. The postmaster said to hit start and end deviation whenever you leave the route, to find a bathroom, to go to a business that would close if you stayed on your line of travel because it is a late day. Who is correct? A. Your postmaster is absolutely incorrect. Only deviations for priority express mail are recorded on the MDD and built into our evaluations. No other deviations are to be recorded on the MDD. However, if we have postmasters who give approval and even direction to build all of these additional deviations into our route evaluations, who are we to argue? 207. When mail is brought back due to weather, holds, blocked boxes, etc. 
Is the pump casing function used prior to recasing, or is pump casing only for curtailed or late mail due for next day's delivery? A. That entry is only for mail cased for next day delivery. Handling of all mail brought back from the route is included in end of shift duties. 208. How do we get paid for moving our stuff from back to front in a POV? Would we use the load feature again? A. No. That is reload credit. Please see pages 93 to 96 of the document determining rural route evaluations under Rex which is linked at the top. 209. I have several customers who live on the second floor of an apartment building and regularly receive parcels. How will I get credited for taking parcels up to their second story door? A. There is no additional credit for stairs involved in the delivery of a parcel or accountable to the door. The panel determined that the driving and walking distances would be determined by straight line measurements as described in question 103 above. When mapping, the carrier pinpoints the location where they park and the location of the door. The distance is calculated from these points. There is no other allowance for driving or walking to deliver to a door. Even though this is not ideal, it is a far better allowance than the current evaluated system. 210. How will Rex account for electronic parcel lockers such as Amazon parcel lockers or electronic parcel lockers installed at apartment complexes? A. Just as they are now, these deliveries will be recorded under miscellaneous time during the mini-mail count. Each of these locations is also recorded as an authorized dismount and authorized dismount distance during route mapping. For electronic parcel lockers, actual time begins once all parcels are located at the EPL and the carrier signs in on the keypad, and continues until the carrier signs out on the keypad. The same time will be recorded in miscellaneous time for each respective day of the entire mail count period. If rural carriers are required to wait to gain access to the keypad, the actual waiting time will also be included in miscellaneous time. For Amazon parcel lockers, each item delivered will be credited with an additional 20 seconds in miscellaneous time. 211. Please clarify use of the carrier poo entry. There is a lot of confusion in the field. A. As in all previous mail counts, there are two events that qualify for the credit provided using the carrier poo, hot keo, entry, 1. Carrier pickup notification and 2. Acceptance of prepaid parcel over £2, not associated with carrier pickup. If both events are performed at the same address, carrier poo is used only once. Carriers are not required to go to the customer's door to collect mail for any reason other than a carrier pickup request which should include at least one qualifying piece, Priority Mail Express, Priority Mail, Priority Mail Express International, Global Express Guaranteed, Priority Mail International and returns via USPS Return Service and Parcel Return Service. The carrier poo entry will be made even if the official pickup request results in no qualifying pieces being collected. The MDD is being updated to accept zero as the number of pieces accepted. In those instances when management directs the rural carrier to accept slash collect these items, or the customer leaves a note in the mailbox requesting such service, or where there is an understanding between management and the carrier that a specific customer has a standing order to have items collected each day or on specific days, the route will be credited by using the carrier poo entry. Each event will be recorded using the carrier poo entry. The number of pieces collected is then counted and entered. Count and enter each mail piece that qualifies in accordance with the list above and any prepaid parcels over £2. Other mail pieces accepted slash collected at this time, such as obvious letter and flat size mail, including small parcels, should not be included in this count. The carrier will then scan the first five qualifying mail pieces collected. If a customer manifest, Form 5630, is presented, the carrier should scan that form using the prepaid acceptance scan in the on-street menu. The MDD is also being updated to allow for a carrier poo entry even when no parcels accepted have barcodes. If the carrier is instructed to scan more than five parcels accepted as part of a carrier pickup, the prepaid acceptance scan should also be used for all parcels beyond the first five. When mail pieces with a barcode are collected on the route out of a mailbox or collection box, the prepaid acceptance scan should be used. Ref. Letter of Mutual Understanding February 24th, 14, 
and Publication 399, July 2015, p. 30. The following examples are intended to assist with the understanding. Example 1. If management approaches the carrier in the morning and instructs the carrier that John Doe at 123 Main Street, who has a curbside box, has items that need to be picked up at the door. The carrier gets to 123 Main Street and collects 20 priority flats, 10 priority boxes, 7 first class small parcels that weigh 2 pounds, or less and 2 parcels that weigh more than 2 pounds, the carrier will use the carrier po entry at the address, and would enter the parcel quantity as 32 and scan the first 5 items collected. If directed, the carrier would scan the remaining parcels using the prepaid acceptance scan. This example would also apply to a note left in the box from a customer and any standing orders that have been discussed between the carrier and the manager. Example 2, if the carrier arrives at a box where no carrier pickup request was made, and there is mail in the box to be collected, and the following items are in the box, 6 priority flats, for small priority boxes less than 2 pounds, and 1 prepaid parcel that weighs more than 2 pounds, the carrier will use the carrier poo entry and enter 1, 1, in the number of parcels. The remaining pieces collected would be scanned using the prepaid acceptance scan. This example would also apply to individual pieces collected at a business that the carrier is authorized an official dismount. It is improper for a customer to request through carrier pickup, call the manager to request a pickup, or leave a note in the box to pick up items at specific location when they do not have any qualifying pieces, Priority Mail Express, Priority Mail, Priority Mail Express International, Global Express Guaranteed. Priority Mail International and Returns via USPS Return Service and Parcel Return Service. If this occurs the carrier should discuss this with their immediate supervisor who should in return discuss with the customer. This service is only provided when there are qualifying pieces. There will only be one carrier repo entry per address. A sack of prepaid parcels collected is entered using the carrier repo entry and the number of parcels collected is 1, 1. If the carrier is required to scan items contained in the sack at the delivery point, the carrier would use the prepaid acceptance scan. If the carrier is required to empty the sack upon return to the post office, additional credit is provided as actual time and end of shift duties. If a carrier accepts a prepaid parcel, merchandise return service, MRS, or a parcel return service, PRS, over two pounds, at the mailbox or at the delivery point, such as a business where a dismount and distance is provided, the carrier will use the carrier po entry, enter the number of parcels collected, and scan the first five items collected. 212. In my office I have to get parcels from two locations. Should the farthest away from my case be the official measurement or an average between both distances? A. Office walk distances should be measured to and from the location used most often. 213. I have an apartment building where the DPS comes out of sequence. All the unit numbers are at random, so it's a bit like doing raw mail. How will we be credited for that under Rex? A. All DPS errors will be counted and recorded as random letters during the mini mail counts. 214. Do NJ carriers get more credit for refueling since we don't pump our own gas and have to wait for an attendant? A. No, the panel made no allowances for that in the standard. There is no allowance for an attendant refueling in the current standard for fueling either. 215. How will those of us with an intermediate office be credited time for case labeling and edit books at the intermediate office when it is listed as an end of shift duty at our primary office? A. Any time spent on those activities in the intermediate office will be captured using miscellaneous time during the mini mail counts. 216. What Rex activity scans are used at intermediate offices? A. Only start load and ENDLOADVEH and any entries for box holders or walk sequenced mailings received at the intermediate office are used. 217. Will we be able to use the load truck function while loading our vehicles? A. Yes, that function is completely optional for rural carriers. However, if the carrier chooses to use the load truck function, the time is included in the loading time for the day. There is no time included in Rex for the individual scans used in the load truck function. 218. In my office I have a large number of newspapers dropped off at our front door. 
How do I get compensated for these papers since they are not counted for volume like flats that run through the postal service? A. If these newspapers are WSS or WSH saturation mailings, they would be recorded on the MDD as received each week throughout the year. If not, then all mail not accounted for elsewhere in RECs will be counted and recorded during the mini mail counts. 219. How is Dormus credited differently from Trip 2 Door? A. Dormusk is used when the carrier goes to the door to deliver or collect an item other than a parcel or a countable mail piece. Trip 2 door is used to indicate more than one trip to the door to deliver parcels and or accountable mail. It is not used to indicate just one trip to the door to deliver a parcel or accountable mail. The initial trip is included in the standard when door is chosen as the delivery location. 220. How do I map delivery points and parking points when in the wintertime I park and deliver parcels to different locations? A. You should map the location that is used most often. 221. In order for the breadcrumbs to populate for the other zip codes on these routes, we have to go to settings in the scanner and switch the zip codes. This often take two minutes or more of time depending on the scanner. And some routes may have to do this process many times depending on how many zip codes they have. What is the compensation given under Rex for this process? A. There is no longer a requirement to change zip codes on the MDD while delivering the route. As long as you have logged into the correct route, all scans and breadcrumbs will be recorded correctly. 222. What do RCAs need to do when providing auxiliary assistance to ensure all scans are recorded properly? A. As long as the RCA logs into the correct route on the MDD, all scans will be recorded correctly. 223. Will we still be able to request a DPS review for quality or quantity? A. Yes, however, with evaluations being updated and reset every six months, the reviews may not often be necessary. 224. Are shrink-wrapped magazines and catalogs included in our digitally recorded flat numbers, or will they be counted as part of the mini mail counts? A. Shrink-wrapped carrier route presort flats are recorded daily all year long from USPS data. The panel also included an adjustment factor of 19% added to this number. 225. Will we still get credit for upside-down letters in the DPS? A. Yes during the mini mail counts only. 226. If I deliver two parcels to the door and supervisor sends an RCA out to deliver another one to the door after I leave, please break down time credited for those parcels for that day. A. Three parcels delivered to the door. 227. There is a lot of debate about if the UNSCANPARCEL is used for parcels that fit in the mailbox that have no barcode. Do we use it for parcels that fit in the box? A. Yes, that entry is used for any item that qualifies as a parcel and does not have a delivery barcode, regardless of where it is delivered. 228. We were told to start load and end load as soon as we leave and return to our case to go gather mail for the day, including tub flats, hotcase mail and DPS. Is this correct? A. No. Those entries are used to begin and end the time when you are loading mail and parcels into your vehicle. 229. Is the scanning of barcode and recording of mileage still in effect for LOVs with Rex? A. Yes. 230. How exactly are second trips recorded with the MDD? A. For second trips, record loading time using STARTLOADVEH and ENDLOADVEH, and use all the normal functions for any parcels or accountable items delivered in the second trip. 231. Are the standard and credits for accountable mail apply only if we deliver it, or they also apply if we leave notice? A. The same standard applies whether delivered or notice is left. No need for any other MDD entries other than the barcode and notice left. 232. Can carriers enter a STAMPSTOCKSALES scan when purchasing stamps to sell on their route? A. No, only when selling stamps on the route. Replenishing your stock by buying stamps is included in the end of shift duties timed every day. 233. We were told by management during Rex training that POV carriers must scan out lunch when refueling their vehicles while on the route, 
and then return lunch when fueling is complete. Is this correct? A. Yes, refueling a personal owned vehicle is considered part of lunch slash break time. Time, 